Has anyone here heard of somatotypes? No? Okay. So, somatotypes is the way that we describe the shapes of, uh, of bodies. The shapes this, of is, this is very much what we learn through mm. the, the education to be becoming fitness professionals is that an ectomorph is somebody that is always going to be tall and skinny and they're not going to put on any muscle unless they eat and eat and eat and eat. The endomorph is the person that's typically lazy and, and needs to exercise and then the mesomorph is the, the gold standard. That's the body that everybody should want to, to try and achieve. Mm. Not yeah. unfortunately. So, <laughs> so that was that was how it was. We were, it was sort of like the the, the uh, yeah, the impetus was that everyone should be the mesomorph, is what it was. Everyone should be that, and if you're not, if you're this person over here, it's because you were, you're lazy, you didn't eat enough to look like that person, and if you're in the middle there, it said that you were lazy and ate too much, and you didn't look like that person. Okay, and that's how it was always done. If you're not that mesomorph, has anyone here been to the fitness convention when it was here in Perth and had a look through and walk through? Well, literally it's designed to be like a mesomorph heaven, okay? All of that area there and all the things that work for mesomorphs, okay, that make the mesomorphs look like they do, doesn't work for everyone else, yet they're told that that's what they need to do to try and look like the mesomorphs, okay? And that's what we're here to do today is unwind a bit of that, show you a bit of science behind it as to why we're all different, and then uh, delve down into what each of your biotypes that you've done looks like and how we can start to uh, make a few changes across them. So, shall we? So with it again, a little bit of science. With your, well this is after almost 48 hours of you being conceived, when we are all tiny little embryos, there are, there are three layers of the embryo which essentially will determine what you end up out as a grown human, baby, child, teen, then adult. This is also not necessarily factoring in some of those lifestyle and environmental things that we touched on earlier, but from your very, very early stages as an embryo, dependent on which of your three layers of your embryo is more dominant, whether it's your ectoderm, which leads to you being more ectomorphic, which is that tall lean one, mesoderm, which is the, the more muscular based, or endoderm, which is more digestion and um, gut type development, they're the people that, again, just naturally will hold that little bit more weight and just be that little bit more robust in their size. So mm -hmm. the ectoderm develops everything through your central nervous system and spinal cord. The mesoderm develops everything through your muscular tissue, tendons, ligaments, uh, and the muscles of your heart as well. And the endoderm, as I, as I sort of mentioned there, is everything that's to do with your gut. So think of what an ectoderm person, so someone who's very neurologically driven, um, might need from a, from a nutritional perspective. What would you think that somebody who's very nervous system dominant, very brain dominant, might want to be eating? You don't have to tell me, but just think for yourselves for the time being. Think of what somebody who's very naturally muscular would eat a lot of as well. And then think of what somebody who is very good at digesting might be very good at too. And again, we'll cover off into that very shortly. But yeah, essentially, uh, while you're developing in your mother's womb, the, uh, the environment and lifestyle that your mother is experiencing from her epigenetic standpoint will determine which of these layers of your embryology are then the dominant ones in you once you're born. And what we've also found is that the those that are that have that area as their strength, it also ends up becoming their weakness as well. So the, the ectoderm people the, you have an ectomorph because your ectoderm was uh, nourished the most, then even though you're quite your senses, your, your spinal cord and your brain senses are quite switched on, then neurological uh, diseases are more prevalent in those people. So the diseases that we see in adults is actually determined on which of the somatotypes that people are as well. And so part of the PHS is talking, goes into that, those depths as well. So nutrition is part of it, but the other elements that actually impact each of the, uh, the body types is also, is also covered off as well. In terms of an endoderm, so their digestive tract is, uh, is nourished quite a lot, so they're able to digest better, but then they also have issues with digestion, so those uh, body types tend to have more issues around their, their stomach and the way that their body digests food as well. Okay. Um, all right, 
And that's where the shape comes from. So you've got the science and that's where the body shapes come from. So what we're gonna move into now is how the body types that you've all entered in, okay, or those, those tests, the results that you've got back, all start to look in the framework of those body types that we've just talked about, okay? So 